Hello, I'm Cheryl. Welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a very easy pot holder. It will take you less than 30 minutes to finish. Now let's look at an example of a pot holder that I've already made. This is the style that we're going to do. I've got this bright red fabric with chili peppers all over it. Now the reason why I picked chili peppers is my husband does all the cooking in the house and he likes to cook a lot of Mexican food. Now he also has very large hands so I make my pot holders to fit him. Most pot holders you buy in the store are maybe seven and a half inches square. So I make his about eight and a half inches square. Also when you're going to make pot holders you're going to be sewing through a lot of fabric and sometimes your fabric will shift when you have that many layers going on. I use a walking foot. Now you don't necessarily need it but if you have one I recommend you use the walking foot. If you don't have a walking foot you're just going to need to use a few more pins to hold the fabric in place as you sew. Okay, so let's look at the things that you need to have cut out. All right, now down here on the bottom here, I have cotton batting. I have two layers of it. You have another option for using on the inside of your pot holders to insulate your hands from the heat. I think it's called Insulbright. Check with your sewing store to see if they have it and what they recommend. But I've never had a problem with using two layers of batting. If you're a little worried, you could use three layers, but it's going to get really, really thick. So the two layers have worked fine. If you have an issue, then try the Insul Bright. So you're going to cut out an uh, eight and a half inch square, or whatever size you want to make, of your batting, two of them. Lay them together. Then you're going to cut out your fabric that you're going to use on the top and bottom and that, put them right sides together where they face each other and then place it on top of the batting and smooth it out. Then you're going to pin your fabric together. And like I said before, if you do not have your walking foot, you're going to need extra pins. I don't have that many in here because what I do works fine with my walking foot, but you might have to put a few more around. Also, you need to leave an opening here so that you can reach inside with your hand and turn it right side out later. So this is my starting point to sew. I have a single pin there, but then after I've sewn all the way around the edges, I have this two pins here and this is to remind me this is where I need to stop because sometimes I get to sewing along really fast I forget to stop I sew it closed so this just is a great way to remind yourself stop here so let's look at one that I've already sewn the edges I did a half inch seam allowance all the way around make sure when you sew in your corners you always leave your needle down press your foot up when you turn your fabric. It'll make it a lot easier to do. Otherwise, everything's going to slip and slide all over the place. The next thing you need to do is trim off all the bulk from all four corners. So I'm going to show you an example of one. You're going to just trim off like that and then go a little bit on the side there and then this side. Okay, you're going to do that on all four corners. Then you're going to reach inside that hole that you left that opening and you're going to turn it right side out. Now your corners are not going to lay really squared. They're going to be kind of rounded a little bit. That's okay. So you can use a tool like this if you have it to poke. Don't use scissors because you're just going to poke right through your fabric and you're going to be very upset with yourself. But they are going to wind up a little rounded. Then you're going to want to fold your fabric on that opening inward a half an inch and put some pins there to secure it. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to get really close to this outer edge, about a sixteenth of an inch, and do a top stitching 
all the way around. And again, when you get to your corners, leave your needle down, press your foot up when you turn your pot holder fabric. Let me show you an example of one that I already did. Now, I don't know if my cameraman can get in real close here, but look for this stitching right here. This is how close I sewed to the, to the edge. Okay, now I don't know if you can see it on here, but I did a decorative top stitching pattern. And I'm going to show you in a moment how I did that. Here is some scrap fabric that I put together so you could see the stitches easily. And it's just this spiraling type of design. And it's really, really easy to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to start in this corner and stitch along this side anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of an inch away from the outer edge. When you get here to where you're about three quarters half inch away from this other edge, leave the needle down, press your foot up, turn your fabric, and sew down this way. And you're going to do that on all the corners. Now when you get down here close to where you started, you want to stop about a half inch, three quarters of an inch where you started and continue that same process. Go up here, leave your needle down, press your foot up, turn your fabric, and keep doing that. And you're just spiraling around. When you get in here to where you can't go any farther, go back and forth, do a few stitches back and forth to secure your stitching, and you have just completed a pot holder. And it looks like this. The reason why you do the top stitching is pot holders get dirty. They will get stained. You will wash them a lot. So when you do the stitching like this, it holds everything together. Over time, your batting can wear out, especially if you're using cotton batting. It might loosen up a little bit. This holds it in there so that you never have to worry about that. It also makes it very secure to handle. Your fabric is not slipping around. You also have these little ridges that kind of keep it more difficult for your hands to slip. So this is why I do this type of top stitching. There are, are other types of top, top stitching that we do and I will show you that in a later video. Now, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, my next video will be how to make a, a pot holder that has a binding on it, a bound edge. It looks like this. Okay, real easy to do, takes just a little bit longer to make, but this is one of my favorite ways to make a pot holder. So my next video I will show you an easy technique for putting this on. So to keep informed on all my future videos, click on subscribe, the red button at the bottom of the screen. When you click on subscribe, YouTube just sends you a quick short email saying that I've got another video for you to watch. So, I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time. Happy sewing.